Okay, how's it going, everybody? And I hope you're all doing well. Okay, well, so in today's episode, I thought I'd try to briefly say something about the German Swiss philosopher and psychiatrist Karl Jaspers. And uh, in particular, I want to try to say something about what he famously calls boundary situations and why they're important for us. Okay, so Jasper says that we make real our potentialities, or we truly self-realize, only when we experience or go through what he calls boundary or limiting situations. So, well, what are these? Well, these are situations that we all face in life that are basically inevitable and insurmountable. Situations we can't avoid, and can't defeat. They're like walls that we run into, says Jaspers. As such, they touch upon, well, as the name suggests, they touch upon the very boundaries or borders of human existence. Now, for Jaspers, there are basically four types of boundary situations. There's the situation of death, the situation of suffering, the situation of guilt, and the situation of struggling. So the idea is, is that we can't live without struggling and suffering. We can't live without feeling guilty. And, well, we all must die. Now, I think that for Jaspers, it's how we approach or confront these situations that really matters. We can approach them in a negative way, or we can approach them in a positive way. And to approach them in a positive way most fundamentally means to, to choose and to act, not to crawl under a rock and stagnate. And ultimately, I think the idea is, is that if we confront these boundary situations with open eyes, if we confront them courageously and responsibly, then, and only then, do we truly begin to realize ourselves and start to live more authentically, all the while bringing about a new relationship with our world? Okay, but that was just uh, broad strokes. So now let's take a look at the details. So these four types of boundary situations, what do they involve exactly? And how is it that we should confront them properly? Well. Let's begin with the situation of, um, of death first. So, well, death is obviously inevitable, right? And as such, it can produce in us the greatest of fear and anxiety. And not only that, but it can create in us feelings of, of nihilism too, as if because we're going to die, nothing matters. Or it's so bad that it can cause us to deny it altogether, which of course is only a temporary strategy and never ends well. But for Jaspers, all of this, it's the wrong way of dealing with death. The right way is to see it as a call for, for urgency and for attentiveness, and so to try to live without delay and without self-deception and without wishful thinking and without bad faith. But maybe most importantly, what confronting death properly does is it makes us aware of what is most essential in life. It puts things into perspective and helps to prioritize what it is that matters most. Okay, well, what about the boundary situation of suffering? Well, that too is inevitable in our lives, of course. Our lives are full of trials and tribulations, some caused by us and some not. And so suffering in one form or another is something we all must face. But again, for Jaspers, it's how we confront suffering that's really important. Now the wrong approach is resignation. The right approach is to try to be joyful despite it. And what's more, it's to learn from it. After all, as Aeschylus says, he who learns must suffer. And it's to find purpose in suffering. As the psychiatrist and uh, concentration camp survivor Viktor Frankl said, difficult times calls for us to be resourceful and courageous. 
The more difficult the task in front of us, the more we're summoned to taking responsibility and finding the right solutions. Life constantly sets out problems for us and the meaning of our lives is going to be measured by how it is we respond to it and fulfill the sorts of tasks it requires of us. So, so life then can have radiant meaning and purpose in the darkest of hours. Okay, well, what about the, uh, the boundary situation of guilt? Well, basically, Jaspers describes the, the situation of guilt like this. He says that we feel guilty when we realize how it is that all of our actions have both intended and unintended effects on others. That when we act, or don't even act, that always has unforeseen consequences. Every time we choose something for ourselves, that results in another person's or sentient being's deprivation or displacement. When we live and make our way in the world, we, in one way or another, exploit others. So the idea is, is that because of this, we're always going to feel guilty towards other people, says Jaspers. But here's the thing, guilt is not just ethical for Jaspers. It's not just about other people. No, we also feel guilty and bend under its strain when we ourselves don't live up to our own aspirations and standards. And here Jaspers also has religious or metaphysical guilt in mind. Well, anyway, so, so what's the right way to confront our situation of guilt then? Well, for Jaspers, it's not to say something like, that's just the way it is, or it's not my fault that things happen this way. No, I think it's partly to learn to take more responsibility for our choices, for acting in the world, and for ourselves. It's to learn to own up to our freedom and to make better decisions. And it's to learn to recognize our solidarity with one another on this planet and to respect our universal humanity. Okay, well, finally, what about the boundary situation of struggle? Well, this is the inevitable struggle that we face when we fight for our everyday material ends, for our jobs and our positions of status, and for our power and influence over things and over others. Now, What's the right way to confront struggle like this? Well, it's not to exacerbate or stoke the fires of what so easily becomes the black emotions like greed and, and envy and violence and ruthless self-interest and lack of compassion. No, the right way to confront everyday struggle is to try to develop less of a coercive and egotistical relationship with others. And it's to be much more communicative, too, since, of course, coexistence requires genuine communication with others. And it's not to use others as instruments for our own ends. And um, if we try to do these things, well, then we start to elevate ourselves. We put ourselves on the path towards the highest form of, of self-realization and we begin to live the most valuable form of human life, one where we can lead a fulfilled and meaningful life, even in the face of inevitable hardship and despair. Bye for now.